OK, we now have 20 of you left. And you're going to board a slave ship. And this is what a slave ship looks like. This is the cross-section of a slave ship. This is a Liverpool slave ship, the slave ship Brooks. And on this ship are between 400 and 600 slaves. It's made for about 505, but if they can pack in, close pack or tight pack, an extra 100, they often will. So at one point, although this ship was designed for a maximum of 505, it had 640 on it. So you're all packed together in there. Okay, there are 20 of you left. On that very voyage, four of you are going to die. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, there are now 16 of you left. <coughs> okay, 16 of you are left at this moment as you go across on that voyage and manage to survive the voyage. You've survived all the disease culture. You've desired, survived being packed in like that into these really tight spaces. Actually, each slave would only have about five foot by two foot to himself. Okay? So you're crouched, often the slaves are crouched into very small, and they're actually chained to, together with all the other um, slaves on the ship. The female slaves are separated from the male slaves. Anyone got any idea why the female slaves were separated from the male slaves? There's two reasons. First reason is they believed that um, the females, if the female slaves and the male slaves were together, they, were, they had a greater propensity to riot and to take over the ship. Also, the female slaves would be at the side next door to the captain's cabin, right on the left-hand side of figure one at the top there. Okay? Also, the boys and the girls would be separated from the male slaves as well boys and the girls. Often children as young as 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 are being traded. Also, we pregnant women have babies aboard these ships and those babies then become slaves. All slave babies follow their mothers in terms of um, their, their status. So why might the captain and the crew want the female slaves in, a, in proximity to themselves? Anyone got an idea? You have to think some really quite nasty thoughts in order to think about this, but these thoughts have to be thought when we think about slavery. Uh huh? So, like, the crew Yeah, basically, so the crew could have relationships with those women. And on those, and it was seen as part of the perks of the job, especially for senior crew members, that they had access to those slave women. So we have a really nice situation here, but we're getting you across on that. We've killed off four of you. You get to America, and you might think your problems are over. However, getting across means that you now need to be seasoned and made ready to be good slaves. And in that seasoning process, another two of you die. One, two. How many of you are left? One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 out of 30. Around half of you are left. Okay. At the back there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you die within three years. There are 11 left out of 30. No wonder the trade has to keep going. It has to replace all the dying and dead slaves for a start. Everyone can sit down now. Can all the four, fives and sixes please stand up? You are representing, can someone count them for me please? You are representing the crew on the slave ship. Okay? You are representing the crew. If we look at the um, actual death rate on the voyage of the slaves, it was about 15%. How many? 29. Okay. Uh, could you stand up at the back, please? Okay, we now have 30 slave ship crew. 
Of those 30 slave ship crew, eight will die on the voyage. Actually, nine will die on the voyage. A quarter of them will die on the voyage. More by percentage of the slave ship crew die on the voyage than the percentage of the slaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, die. Okay, that's about the slave ship crew numbers was about 30. Okay, you can all sit down now. That shows you what a cruel trade it was, not only for the slaves, but also for the crew. Why were so many of the crew dying on the voyage? Yep, a different disease culture. Just as the slaves come across a different disease culture, so do the um, uh, crew members, both in Africa and in the Americas. Okay? A tropical disease culture. Okay. Quickly, this one again. What do you pick up in Middle Passage? In, in Africa, you pick up slaves. You go back to the West Indies, and there you pick up goods. What kind of goods would you pick up in the West Indies in America to take back to Britain? Sugar. Sugar. Tobacco. Tobacco. Cotton. 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 Sorry? Cotton. Copper you might get in... Sorry? Coffee. Coffee, that might be one. Not, not, not a gigantic amount, more of that in South America. But yes, you're right, that was a trade good for, um, for, for, for slaves. Mahogany. Rum. All of these are trade goods for slaves. They were actually um, farmed in plantations by the slaves, exchanged for their new incoming slaves, and then sent back. See how neat this is? You never have an empty ship. Always the ship is full of trade goods, slaves, or raw goods going back to Britain. It's the sweet tooth of the British and the Europeans that pushes on this slave trade. Because in sugar production, that's the harshest one for the slaves. Okay, but it wasn't sugar that made Manchester great. What is it that made Manchester great? Cotton. cotton. Well done. And we can see an illustration of how cotton specifically leads to... the um, growth of Manchester. This is a diagram, the bottom there, of the value of cotton imports to America. Starts off in 1810 and just 7% of the total. By 1860, just on the eve of the Civil War, it's up to nearly 60% of the total of value of US exports. Okay? Where does that cotton go? Some of it goes to the north of America, to make finished cotton, but the bulk of it comes back to Britain, to places like Bolton, Ashton, Manchester, Preston. And what happens to it there is it's made into finished cotton goods, okay? And helps to speed the Industrial Revolution, helps to speed the wealth of this whole region. But what does it also do? Look at this. This um, diagram, which is slipped off, This diagram graphically shows you what happens. Over the entire period into America, into North America, there were only 500 to 600,000 slaves imported from the 14, 15, uh, 14, sorry, 1619 when the first slaves arrived in North America right to um, uh, 1859 when the last illegal voyage left. Okay, so you had around 600,000 slaves in 1790, and only a small amount of cotton production. By the eve of the Civil War, you've, you've, you've multiplied by a factor of thousands the amount of uh, cotton produced, and hence you've multiplied the amount of slaves needed. There is a direct correlation between the cotton industry and the demand for cotton, raw cotton in Manchester, and the development of that gigantic expansion of the slave economy in North America. Okay? And that illustration shows you it, doesn't it? Can you see how it does? 
Do you see that the figure of slaves is not many in North America in 1790? A few hundred thousand. The eve of the Civil War, there's nearly four million. And that's because of our need for cotton in the industrialising world. Okay?